Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be looking at Le Lewin's force field analysis in the IB unit 1.7. And um, the table of content for this unit um, was fishbone diagram and decision tree. Both of these videos are already up on my channel, so please check them out. And today we'll be looking at the force field analysis and then later on the Gantt chart. So the force field analysis. It's a tool that looks at factors that influence change. These factors are either the so-called driving forces for change, meaning they, they support the change of the business, or restraining forces against the change, uh, meaning they, they prevent this change or go against this change. Um, what you need for this analysis is pretty simple, but you'll need some things. For example, you'll need the, the, the most important thing about this uh, analysis is the change or the goal you're trying to ana analyze. You'll also need, um, or as a manager, you'll have to look at all the driving and restraining forces to that um, change. And then you'll have to score them out of one to five, um, going from weak to strong. So here's an example of a force field analysis on the right. Um, it's not a, it's just a outline pretty much of the force field analysis. And you can see um, in the middle, this blue bar is the, is the change or goal in the middle. And then on the left, you'll see the driving forces, which are green, and these will act positively on the change or support the change. And then on the right, the red um, arrows are the restraining forces. And that's where you're going to write down all the forces in these uh, little arrows. And each force you'll have to score out of one to five, one being the weakest and then five being the strongest. And then at the end of the analysis, you'll add up all the points on the, on the driving forces side and all the restraining forces on the restraining forces side and get a total number of score. So the advantages and disadvantages of the, of the force field analysis here the, on the left you'll see the advantages and on the right you'll see the disadvantages the first advantage is that is that it's um, more objective and logical as it is a quantitative tool due to the factor that you'll have to score it out of one to five it makes it a quantitative tool which um, usually is seen as more logical and objective on the other hand qualitative factors um, or forces are very hard to quantify, meaning that it's going to be difficult for a manager to objectively or just to to try to score them out from one to five, as it always is with qualitative factors. The second advantage would be its, its simplicity. It's, it is a big benefit. Um, it's simple in showing forces against and for change in a visual representation. This also comes, this is also a good way to communicate in business meetings to show this analysis as it is very simple and forthcoming to people in the meeting or to your business partners. Um, on the other hand, it, the excluding or leaving out of a force alters the outcome drastically. Because as you could see in the prior diagram, uh, in the prior um, example, or in all the force field analysis examples, if you leave out one factor and um, one one factor that has a score um, that has a higher score, it will have a huge impact on the total number um, that you calculate at the end, which will have a which will alter your decision making maybe in a in a bad way. So that's something you'll have to take into account too. The last advantage would be that it makes the managers think about the relative importance of the factors due to them having to weight this. Um, this means basically that due to the process of the manage, manager having to weight these factors and forces, it will make him think about all these, the, the, these relative importance of these forces, which sometimes is a very good thing. Uh, it's always a good thing, but usually sometimes it, it doesn't actually happen. So this analysis will, will make the manager do that. And then 
The last disadvantage would be that weighting is usually subjective and is therefore prone to potential bias. And that's the point that uh, you always think about actually as the first disadvantage to such um, quantitative tools that uh, such as the decision tree, it's kind of the same, same argument that um, the manager or the, the business person that's going to analyze and do this analysis will have to somehow come or get the, get these um, percentages or get these scores. Um, in the decision tree, it was the percentages that they have to come up with. Um, how, what's the percentage of it of the decision being successful and uh, of of failing? And here in this case, it's about the score which makes it prone to potential bias. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in my next video.